no air conditioning and very little ice. How in the world do Parisians enjoy life when those temperatures rise? Well, today I will share what I've learned during my part-time life in Paris about how Parisians embrace the summer heat and enjoy life without those typical American comforts of air conditioning and ice. Welcome to the Extraordinary Women podcast show where we explore how women over 50 can design, create, and live their own fabulous next chapters. I'm Sherry Harmel, your host of the show. First off, I have to share, ice is not a part of the Parisian culture. You won't find cold glasses of water clinking with ice cubes at restaurants or cafes. And everywhere you go, you will see that windows and doors are open. Air conditioning in France is almost non-existent. And if it does exist, it is nothing like the American air conditioning, you know, where we sometimes shiver if we don't have a shawl or a sweater with us. But let's start with how Parisians change up their eating habits when those temperatures rise. Well, first of all, during those hot summer months, the French prefer cold food. They still have beautiful meals filled with fresh and seasonal vegetables, but a lot of their summer meals consist of cold dishes. Now, cold soups are a favorite. In America, cold soups are rarely served. Maybe a little gazpacho here and there, but we don't tend to embrace all kinds of cold soups. In France, that's very different. They find creative ways to mix fruits and veggies into what I call yummy cold soups. You'll see cold zucchini soup, courgette, as they call them. You'll see mixed soups like tomatoes and melon and cucumber, you know, such interesting combinations. You will also see fruit soups like strawberry and basil. Absolutely yummy. Soups can also be a dessert. Try out a few and see how you like them. Salads are also always on the menu in the summer months in Paris, and they're often mixed. The, the leaves, lettuce leaves, are often mixed with grains like couscous. Couscous came up from Africa into the French cuisine uh, quite a long time ago. On top of that, you will see often see hard-boiled eggs, and you will see an assortment and ever-changing uh, seasonal vegetables that are part of the salad. What you won't see on French salads in the summer is typically meat. That is not something that um, is added to uh, summer salads in Fran France. It's just it's just not a go to. Now, I, there's another bit I have to share with you, and that is that regardless of the season, the salads in France, specifically, I'm talking about Paris, typically never have overpowering dressings. In America, we are all about dressing. We are more about dressing than we are about the salads. And in France, that is entirely different. There are usually maybe one, not one, but two at the two ingredients, an olive oil of some kind, a vinegar of some time, and sometimes a third ingredient is added, May, maybe a fourth, but that's it. You're talking olive oil, vinegar, mustard, garlic, something of that sort. It's very lightly added, whatever the dressing is, it is not coating all the leaves of the salad. It is lightly dispersed through the salad. Even their Caesar salad, which I believe is on every single cafe menu, probably for the American tourists, but Caesar salads are much more lightly dressed, if you want to call it that, than what you would get in America. Therefore, if you ask a French waiter to put the dressing on the side, you are going to get a very bizarre look because it's just, it's not needed and the dressing is part of the preparation of the actual salad. Now, the other thing that is light and fresh, as I like to call it, is Parisian summer dressing. They wear light clothing colors in the summer. They wear fabrics that breathe, and that's true for men and for women. French women, though, love 
dresses in the summer. They actually like dresses year round, but especially in the summer. And therefore, regardless of anyone's age, you will see dresses on women everywhere. I've embraced that actually, the longer I've been in France. Um, I love summer dresses. I like dresses um, overall. They're cool though in the summer and yet you still feel feminine, which is sometimes hard when it gets hot out there and your makeup is sliding down your face. Also, when temperatures rise, Parisians head outside. In the summer, and some of you may know this, but in the summer along the, the River Seine, the mayor of Paris authorizes what is basically a temporary beach they call them the Paris Plage um, to be, and, and it's it's built every summer. They bring in sand, umbrellas. They have little tables, lounge chairs, and and this is all for Parisians who can't leave the city. You know, it's so Parisian culture or French culture is so much about vacations, but sometimes people don't have the wherewithal to go to a gorgeous beef be excuse me, beach somewhere, or they don't have a summer home or a family home. And so those, those little beaches along the River Seine are actually perfect, quite charming, <laughs> absolutely. I've also noticed though that over, over the years, the longer I've been there, it's, I find this so fascinating. Parisians love the sun, winter or summer. You will see them in parks, you'll see them in cafes, you'll see them sitting along the Seine, all with their faces tilted up towards the sky to take in as much sun as possible. In the summer, you know, they just show off more of their bodies so that they can get tanned all over, not just their faces. And I have to say that because of that long history, of that part, part of the world. Most Parisians are really a mix of several Mediterranean, Middle Eastern, or even African ethnicities. Therefore, they tan, and they tan beautifully. Me, I turn into like a beet-faced hot mess, let me tell you. So this, for, for me, this is one Parisian summer culture that I really can't embrace. So while the Parisians are looking for the chairs that are facing the sun, I'm usually trying to find the shaded areas of cafes or parks. This love of sun is, is truly also a message to others when their, vaca when their vacations end. There's a time period in the very beginning of September, it's called rentre, when everyone returns from their summer vacations. And they're returning because Schools are back in session, shops are open, offices are open, you know, because typically uh, French people take the month of August off. And so returning with a tanned face means that you have probably been someplace fabulous. Think Saint-Tropez in the south of France. Honestly, showing off your summer tan is much more valued in September than any fancy handbag you could purchase. Remember, Parisians are all about experiences. That's the time of the year, actually, when I feel like, you know, just a complete ghost because I, I just don't tan. So I look like I've been nowhere, right? <laughs> I spent the summer in a forest. <laughs> so the other aspect of summer and how you know, Parisians really have learned to enjoy life as those temperatures rise. And is, I have to say, eating outside. And that is really preferred during the summer months. Now, it might be because their houses aren't cooled in the summer, never were like they are in America. But we Americans have gotten a little bit um, off the chart about our comforts in our homes, if we want to call it that. We want our homes warm in the winter and cold in the summer. And there are also, though, in defense of America, there are also parts of the U.S. that get very hot in the summer. Um, my aunt lives in Arizona, and honestly, it has been over 110 degrees now for weeks. Um, nowhere in France does it get that hot. So maybe that is why 
the AC preference that we have in America has really infiltrated all of America. I don't know, but it's very, very different in France. You are also naturally outside much more in Paris um, than almost probably any American city. It's a walking culture. And therefore, when I'm in Paris, I'm walking to get a coffee. I'm walking to shop. I'm walking to meet friends, whether it's 40 degrees out Fahrenheit or 80 degrees. That said, when there's no AC, it's cooler to be outside during the summer months than inside. Therefore, much more of life happens outside in the summer months in Paris. They make a party of it. My Paris apartment doesn't have AC, and I have to share that I learned, you know, and as an American, I always think, you know, oh, there must be a way to figure this out, right? There must be a way to solve this. Um, but I learned there was no way I could get approval to put a condenser outside on my balcony. Therefore, my whole idea of central air conditioning, you know, was shot down. But yet, you know, I have to say, when I slowed down and thought about how different the Parisian architecture of streets and of the buildings would look, how different it would look if there were condensers hanging outside on every single balcony. Kind of crazy, isn't it? Many Parisians have mobile AC units in their apartments. But when I'm there during the hot months, I actually just put fans, one in each room that kind of rotates around. And frankly, I've gotten used to it. I have found that the body adjusts. So think about that as you relate to your own life. And your own life, if it's back in America, you know, how could you turn that AC up? How could you turn the AC off and open the windows? Now, as I said, the French figure out how to how to make a party of of really anything that other maybe other cultures might view as a little bit negative. And they have certainly made a party of eating outside during the summer. One of the benefits of COVID was that dining went outside. And at first, you know, I should say it went outside in a bigger way. There's always been the outside rows um, of, um, you know, rows that are facing the road where you could sit and people watch as well as, you know, have your lunch, your dinner, your coffee, whatever it might be. But COVID, because people wanted to be outside and felt safer in doing so, COVID allowed, um, uh, restaurants to build outside structures that were actually built into the road. Not unlike America. In America, we have much bigger sidewalks. And so consequently, what I've noticed in Boston is that we built the structures into the sidewalks rather than into the road. Um, but what I think is so interesting is that everyone loved it so much that these structures have remained post COVID. Um, especially during the summer months in Paris, what you notice in the winter often, or once it gets really cold, they will pull up those structures and clean the streets below them. And, but honestly, by May, they're back out there and the structures just keep getting prettier, which I, I love, whether it's in Paris or here in America, in Boston, they're just lovely. It's, and it's a win. It's a win for both the restaurant owners as well as us, the customers. But in besides outside cafe dining, in Paris, you will also see picnics everywhere. Not something I see much in the US actually. Oh, there are, you know, a few every weekend in the Boston Public Garden as an example on a very pretty day. But there, we're not a picnic culture as a whole. It might be that we don't have the fixings, you know, we don't have the culture of the lovely tablecloth, the dishes, the glasses, the basket that, you know, beautifully holds everything. Or maybe it's that we rarely sit on the ground once we graduate from kindergarten. But um, for Parisians, that's not an issue. I think, you know, I think a bigger cultural issue actually is that in the French culture, the meal is special. It's all about being with people you enjoy. And it typically lasts much longer than any American meal. 
So to an American, we might say, let's meet for lunch and then we'll go to wherever that is. Whereas in Paris, we would say, let's eat lunch and there, let's meet for lunch. Let's have a picnic for lunch. There is no and then. The lunch is, is the, the event. So carrying a picnic basket and food to a lovely spot on the Cham, Cham de Mars is a perfect way to spend the afternoon. Some of my favorites are on the banks of the Seine, the Place de Vosges, the Cham de, uh, Cham de Mars. Um, you know, in most evenings, you actually, if you walk along the Seine, you will actually see a couple who, you know, has a bottle of champagne out and real glasses, just sitting along the sun, you know, letting the cool breeze, um, you know, cut, flow through them and sharing what I think is just a lovely experience. It's all about the charm that we feel when we're in Paris. And, you know, why not bring it home? There's a very fun book, and I will put it down in the show notes. It's called The Paris Picnic Club. And there are all kinds of ideas in that book. I just found it uh, yesterday, and I thought, oh my gosh, I have to share this with you. The authors of this cookbook actually started, um, it all began actually with a weekly picnic for friends, and then it evolved into a pop-up restaurant, believe it or not, and then a blog, and ultimately they wrote this book. So, you know, check it out again. The information's down in the show notes, but it's really a special little book. And it maybe give you some ideas of how to bring picnics into your life in America. In Paris, there is also the Dîner en Blanc or Dinner in White. Now, this is an incredible event that began in 1988 and it's embraced by many cities throughout the world. I think there's one in Philadelphia, New York. I think there's one in Atlanta. Uh, it's just fantastic. It's an outside dinner in the summer months. In Paris, it's typically in June, but the location is moved every year. And it's a secret to anyone who is not invited. In fact, it's a secret to everyone who is invited up until you know, almost the time of the of the dinner that when they actually receive the message as to where the location is. Now, how to get invited? It's a word of mouth invitation only, and frankly, a bit of a mystery to this Parisian. It's called the white dinner because everyone dresses in elegant white clothing. You will not be, if you show up truly in anything but white, you will not be invited back. And I'm telling you, the French look of dispro disapproval is legendary. You will get those looks. So show up in white, everything. Everything you have on has to be white. You and your dinner mates bring tables, you bring chairs, you bring the tablecloths, the napkins, all in white, plus a typically multi-course meal with accompanying drinks. Now, some people do it fancy and they have someone cater them but others you know lug it all out to whatever the location is set it all up and have a beautiful meal i have never been but the photographs of the candles that are lit up as the you know the night sky comes up uh you know the elegant meals it, it just all looks like a dream to me what a beautiful idea that in so many ways typifies how the french deal with rising temperatures and still make their joie de vie. So what about having your own white dinner in your own backyard? You know, you could put a table in your backyard on the grass or in the garden, dress it, you know, beautiful tablecloth and invite people to all come dressed in white. How fun would that be? But even if it's just you, Putting a tablecloth on your table that sits on your balcony or your terrace or in your yard will make everything you serve look and feel more special. You're worth it. Do it. Invite your special, you know, friend or your your significant other and, and have your own little white dinner. How fun would that be? And this leads me to drinks. Ah, the drinks. 
Like I said, there is very little ice anywhere in Paris. That American fridge where the ice maker is always included and it's sometimes, you know, outside on the outside of the fridge where you can get your water and, and choose ice is unheard of in France. And I have a hunch that it's not even desirable. That creates, because there's a kind of a no ice culture, I think there's a difference in terms of how they actually taste their cocktails and how they actually serve their drinks. It's kind of interesting. Yes, the cocktail trend has, you know, blossomed in Paris, but the preference for ice has yet to accompany it. And because, maybe because of the limitation of making ice, I have no idea. Regardless, though, I want to share with you a few of my favorites. And French summer cocktails are endless. You can Google them. It just goes on and on and on. But my own starts with the Cure Royale. Cure Royale is made with Crème de Cassis, which is a black currant liqueur. It's just yummy. White wine or champagne. I like mine either way. In Paris, it is served sans wine, excuse me, sans ice, meaning no ice. It's absolutely lovely. Um, in America, sometimes when I order it, it depends on the restaurant, but sometimes I will get it with ice. So I have to ask for no ice if I want a truly French experience. Then there is the aperitif called, Li Li I'm going to massacre the pronunciation, Lié. Um, it's spelled L-I-L-L-E-T, and it is now readily available in America. I keep a bottle of it in my fridge all the time. It really didn't hit America until after the Second World War, because at that time, there were many American soldiers who had been stationed, obviously, in France. They brought it back in their suitcases because they, you know, it was unavailable. It had, hadn't made it across the pond, so to speak, yet. Um, like I said, you can drink uh, Lié uh, chilled, or it can be added to cocktails like the French Negroni, which when you add the Lié, it makes that ne Negroni a little more sweet and citrusy than the Italian version. Then there, there is the ubiquitous French 75. This was actually created by an American in France. Um, this is a common French cocktail that is often served at weddings, brunches, and holidays. It's a mixture of champagne, dry gin, fresh lemon juice, and simple sugar. It's super easy to make, and it is oh so refreshing. Maybe the as I think through that whole ice concept or the lack of ice, maybe the ice melting in our drinks and the subsequent watering down of the flavor is one of the reasons that the French have never really embraced ice. The French have a very cultivated palate, which we know from their food culture, and I suspect the drinks are no different. They want to taste what they're drinking and not have it be watered down by melting ice. So, whether you plan your own picnic, a white dinner, or simply enjoy a refreshing summer drink without ice, take a cue from the Parisian way of life and embrace the heat. Figure out how to make it special and an enjoyable experience or create those enjoyable experiences. Let's all toast, sante, cheers to living life to the fullest, and creating your own joie de vie. I wanna thank you for tuning in today, and I hope you feel even more confident that you can make your next chapter one of your best. If you liked this episode, don't forget to give us a thumbs up because that tells both YouTube and the podcast platforms to promote this video. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to our show for more episodes. Remember, start on those next chapter dreams today and watch your life evolve into something extraordinary. Abiento.